Okay, repairing a Harbor Freight three pound rotary rock tumbler. Uh, it was made by Chicago Electric. I think I paid 45, maybe 60 bucks for it. Um, a lot cheaper than the uh, expensive, um, like Frankfurt Arsenal makes a rotary rock tumbler, or not a rotary rock tumbler, but a brass tumbler. Um, a couple other companies make them as well, but they tend to be pretty pricey. Um, so I got this one from Harbor, Harbor Freight. Had a couple issues with it, but for the most part, it's been pretty good. And I've processed probably close to about 15,000 rounds with it. A couple issues here and there. A couple things you got to watch out for. Um, but for the most part, is plug it in, flip it on, and, and let it run. Um, all night long, a couple of days, three, four days. I usually only need mm, a little less than 24 hours will usually be enough time. Um, yeah, let's get on to... Uh, issues that I've had with it. Um, so from the factory, the first issue that I had um, was this guy. Um, these clear nylon tubes. Um, and I kept having issues immediately with this bushing right here. Um, I've tried to replace it a couple of times. Um, ended up having to take this all apart and put it back in here because it fell out a couple of times. Um, but I ended up uh, trying to lubricate it with some engine oil, 5W30. Um, and the issue that I ran into was that that 530 got up, made its way really quickly to this, to the tube, to that nylon or whatever it is, clear plastic tubing. Um, and once it got to that, it got inside of it, worked its way in there, um, and then the shaft was spinning inside of this, um, which basically made the entire thing useless. Um, so I ended up cutting that off with a razor blade and then I had actually end up taking out this entire shaft to put that. This is just a rubber hose. I don't remember what size it is. Just one of the ones I had kicking around in the garage. Um, but what you'll actually end up needing to do um, is first you'll want to make sure, before you do anything at all, make sure that you unplug this. Um, and there are warning labels on it that it can shock you and it can kill you. Um, and I can attest to that. It, hit me pretty hard uh first time i was uh trying to fix it shocked the living crap out of me um but basically you don't want to touch this and you don't want to touch that um and basically you don't want your hands anywhere in this case at all while it's plugged in because even if it's not on there's still power right to the switch and it will shock the living shit out of you and it hurts um so the first thing you're going to want to do um to do anything with this shaft whether it's um you either need to replace this or if you need to replace these plastic bushings on the end which this one's still intact somehow so if I can get the bushing itself to spin yeah that's the black part right there is the bushing and that's the shaft going into it um, but if you end up needing to replace one of those first thing you need to do um, is actually you can either remove the belt or you can pop it off but either way you have to end up adjusting the belt um, and the way you do that is over here with there's four screws um, and let me back up here just a little bit um, so this plate sits up here just a ventilation cap basically just to keep you from getting your fingers in there and shocking the crap out of yourself um, there's four screws in the corners um, just a little Phillips or a flathead will take those out but you get that taken off of there um, you've got four screws on the back side over here. Um, these are your adjustment screws for that belt. You can either loosen those up or you can do it the fun way. Um, and it's a little bit easier to do it with the belt still on there, at least to get that screw out right there. But that screw just holds pressure on the pulley. If I can get a picture, you can see how it's kind of, it's not, the center of the shaft is actually squared off. And that's so that screw can go in there and hold that. Um, so when you're putting that on, be conscientious of that. Um, so what you'll want to do is take that screw all the way out, um, and then this pulley will slide right off of there. Um, and it'll slide off of there with the belt still on it. You have to play with the belt a little bit to get it to pop off of there. Um, you can see I've got mine actually pretty fairly loose. Um, and if it's too loose, um, it'll end up just sitting there and squealing instead of actually spinning, which this one's probably gonna need a little bit more attention more tension on it. Um, 
Uh, let's see, but as for replacing these bushings, you can see where this is where the shaft originally sat and as it wore, as it ran and ran and ran and wore, it actually ended up running into right there. It's actually eating through this side case, which is just stamped steel. It's real cheap. Um, so it, once it eats through that plastic, you're gonna to wanna to get it replaced um, because now that mine's dropped down that far, um, it keeps snapping belts. Um, so the way I, I tried first to use like a, um, a piece of a, like a ballpoint pen, cut the plastic out and tried to slide it in there. Um, but the issue was is that it, it has to have a lip on it, it has to have an edge um, to keep that bushing from sliding all the way in and then just the shaft falling down. And that's what kept happening is that I had this little piece of plastic from a ballpoint pen slid over the end of it and it just kept sliding on the shaft and it wasn't doing anything for me um, but i finally this is a hopefully this one actually works pretty well um, but a fix that i found because i couldn't really think of anything that was quite the same as that little bushing because it had to be about that sized and it had to have a lip on the outside edge of it and it had to only be just a small lip so that you can actually fit the snap ring over the end of the shaft which, if you see there's a little groove right there, there's a snap ring that fits on there. Um, and that little guy is right here. Um, but what I ended up using to get him off um, was just this flathead screwdriver. Um, and all I ended up doing was just sticking it in the end of it. Right here. And then prying it against the case. And I was able to get it to pop off of there. I'm not going to take this one off because this one's doing alright. Um, they're kind of a pain. You kind of got to have two hands to do it and be patient with it. I mean, it's a small piece of machinery. I mean, my hands are, they're really not that big. They're fairly small, but I mean, I even struggle to hold on to the little tiny little components that are in this. And be careful not to lose them. Um, magnet is a great way to kind of hold on to all your little parts and screws. Um, yeah, you've got a little snap ring right here and it's hidden under a little steel stamped cap. It's got two screws in the end of it. Just slides over the end. Just helps protect, protect it from dust and keeps that from kind of catching on anything or rubbing on anything, which for the most part it shouldn't. Um, but yeah, what I ended up doing was, uh, what I ended up thinking of was, why don't I just use one of my casings? I mean, I got thousands of these. Like, all right, well, um, try to 357, uh, Magnum and that actually ended up being the one that, that worked the best for me um, But as you can see All I've done is just drilled out the center hole um, and this one's a steel case um, You can also use these I Figured I'd start with the steel. I could go to the brass I just know the brass is a lot softer than steel and I wanted something that would kind of hold up um, Just because every time this thing breaks I don't immediately stop everything that I'm doing to fix it I'm kind of like well, I guess I'm going to be running low on brass for a little while. Um, and I usually won't catch up because I've usually got a couple of, you know, thousand cleaned casings that are ready to go. But eventually I got to get it running again. Um, so what I ended up doing was taking the 357 and I drilled right, in, right into the primer. I mean, obviously it's a shot case. It's a spent casing. Um, but I just drilled right through the, the primer and just kept drilling and then kind of stepped it up bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until I got it to where it was getting pretty close to where it would almost slide on. Get the shaft pulled back out of here. I got it to where it was just about ready to slide all the way in. Um, and it kept kind of hanging up right there. Um, so what I ended up doing is just taking a rat tail file so I could kind of get it really, really close without being way too exceptionally big. Um, and then I just used that rat tail file um, and just worked it in and out, in and out, and kind of, you know, just kept checking it and looking in there and seeing if I could still see a little bit of a lip. As you can see, I could probably take a little bit more out of this one. I could probably make it a little bit more precise. Um, but for the purpose of that, what it's doing, um, I mean, the plastic one held up for a good, geez, probably a year and a half. And not continuous use, but a good year and a half. Um, so I'm hoping the steel will hold up just fine, but all I, end, all I end up needing to do is just push this little guy on here and then reapply the snap ring. Um, this can get a little bit tricky and be patient with this. This part really, really sucks. 
I'll be straight with you on that. Because what you end up having to do is take one hand and again make sure it's oh my god, look at that. It's plugged in. Unplug it. Um, take your finger and you're going to want to hold on this pulley. Um, but don't put too much pressure on it because if you put too much pressure on it, the snap ring behind here is going to pop out. When that pops out, then you got to basically take the whole thing back apart. Um, so it's kind of a delicate procedure. Be patient with it. Don't put too much pressure on it. But basically all you're going to do is you're just going to kind of hold it into place. And then get that uh, 357 casing pushed as far in there as you possibly can. And then take your snap ring, if you haven't lost it, and slide it over the top. Now the snap ring is, it does exactly what it does in case you have never dealt with one of these before. Um, it's basically just a piece, small piece of spring steel. Um, and you can see there's little holes in it. If you have a pair of snap ring pliers, it'll make this go a lot, lot easier. If you don't, a simple flat head and just a little bit of patience, you can get them off of there. Um, but what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up pushing it on there. And you're going to kind of want to cock it to one side and hook the one side first and then kind of put pressure on it and work your way around it and it'll snap back in there. Um, but that's all there really is to these. Uh, and I, but these are an absolute nightmare. Oh, they suck. Um, so be patient with it. You know, you're probably going to end up pushing this in too far and end up popping the, the uh, snap ring behind there and you'll know it because then when you go to tension the belt, this will be too far this way so the belt won't line up quite right. It'll be the belt instead of sitting like that will actually sit crooked either that way or that way probably more like that way um, yeah that's really there's really not a whole lot to these um, again make sure these that's unplugged you can already see I was sticking my fingers in it when it wasn't when it was still plugged in um, but all you've got is just a little electric motor this is just a little impeller little fan that's supposed to keep this motor cool um, you got your belt right here, which you want a little you want a little bit of play to it. You shouldn't be able to play any chords with it, like a D chord or anything. Um, just a little bit of tension to it. Um, and the way you adjust it is just with these four screws again right here on the back. Um, and these will fight you. Um, if you take them all exceptionally loose, the whole motor is just going to go flop. And it's just going to sit there and it's just going to flop around. Um, so kind of put a little bit of pressure on one of them. So loosen three of them and then tighten one down just a little bit so you can still kind of move it around and get it where you want it and then just tighten them down one at a time. And then check your tension, which I like to do. You just plug it in. And check the tension. Don't adjust it with it running or with it plugged in. And then I'll just turn it on. And if you can hear it kind of squealing, and you know you're too tight, um, which, yeah, I just stuck my finger in there with it going. See that? If you get it too tight, it's not going to turn, and it's going to sit there, and it's just going to eat that belt up if it gets too tight. Um, and, yeah, just adjust it with back here with these screws. Um, watch out for that little fan. I know it's plastic, but it will do some damage to your fingers, especially if they're not hardened leather like mine starting to become. Yeah, I hope that helps you guys out. Um, and remember, before you adjust it, even if it needs to go one way or the other, turn it off and unplug it. Because it will get you, and it hurts.